Hey, welcome to the Virtually Speaking podcast, exploring VMware Cloud Foundation inside the private cloud. My name is Pete Fletcher, and joining me as always is my good friend, Mr. John Nicholson. John, how you doing, buddy? Good. I'm 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 feeling kind of clever, but not not fully autonomously smart yet. I feel like there's there's some some things I need to learn today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's that, that's a great segue, John, for sure. And we have the right people to help you get smarter in that regard. We're talking VMware Private AI. I know that it is definitely all the rage at VMware Explore. There's been so much content shared, uh, and so I think we have a really good mix today. We've got some product marketing, but we also have some deep technical marketing as well to join the conversation. Welcome back, Hamanchu. Thank you. And joining the conversation from technical marketing is is uh, Justin Murray. Justin, welcome. Thank you for for having me. Awesome. So why don't we just start from the top level. For those that have not heard, what exactly is VMware Private AI? Yeah, for those who've been hiding under a rock, yeah. <laughs> let's start it from the beginning, right? So uh, there's a whole concept of AI, right? and then there is private AI. So this is a term that uh, you know VMware by Broadcom has essentially coined in the market uh, because we saw this as a key feedback from customer conversations that as customers are thinking about AI and specifically generative AI, uh, one of the big things that uh, became apparent was that was about privacy, privacy of their data, privacy of their IP, uh, privacy of like you know access uh, to their to you know the 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 model that they're creating, and so this, which is why we introduced VMware Private AI as uh, you know as a as a brand as a category essentially where we are specifically saying hey you can get all the benefits of generative AI that you want, but at the same time we want to make sure that we are focusing on privacy, security, compliance as well, because as an enterprise, you have to think about you know, AI as another enterprise grade workload, your tier one workload. So all those kind of key factors have to be there in place as, you know, as, a, uh, as a, you know, typically a large enterprise, um, be f while you wanna get all the best from the, you know, the latest technology and those kind of things. So at the, you know, from a basic genesis perspective, that's what private AI is about, and that's where VMware private AI comes in. Now, there's a, there's a few things in the context of VMware private AI, and we can talk more about that as well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, but when I first heard it, I remember thinking like, this is only for the extremely large companies that are doing this, but I, I, I don't think that's the case anymore. I feel like it's getting a lot more common. Have you, heard, have you been speaking to any customers? Is this becoming more common in general? Absolutely, or? yeah. In fact, uh, so, and in fact, if you think about like, this is a great survey to talking about what are the different components of VMware private AI today and how we are going to market with that, right? So we're actually working with a variety of partners in the industry, working with NVIDIA, of course. We've been working with NVIDIA for, I don't know, a decade at this point in time yes, with, a, with a variety of, uh, you know, things that we've done with them uh, over time. And we've had AI offerings with NVIDIA for five plus years now. Um, so NVIDIA, of course, you know, there's a key piece there. And we have an offering called VMware private AI Foundation with NVIDIA. Uh, and there it's like a full stack, easy button solution where you can basically go and you know you, you can rest assured that with you know Broadcom and NVIDIA kind of coming together to giving you this overall stack of uh, you know core infrastructure and all the the you know the, the uh, generative AI framework and, and uh, model capabilities that you want to you know run. So that's kind of one option. Um, on the other hand, there might be folks who are looking at either smaller language models, for example, instead of the LLMs or the large language models, and then also running uh, typical kind of AI workloads uh, where they can actually benefit from you know, running AI, uh, their AI workloads on Intel's uh, latest generation Xeon you know, CPUs, for example. They come with a, a bunch of like AI accelerators built in. And so what that does is you can now, as part of your server refresh cycle, you basically get into the new Xeon you know, 4 and 5 gen and uh, be able to then run AI workloads on your kind of core infrastructure as well. So again, different uh, use cases, different entry points for customers. And again, you know, we know uh, infrastructure for AI is expensive, and uh, which is why we're making sure that we're addressing a variety of these, you know, um, uh, customer use cases and customer price points as well, for example. Another one I want to call out is our partnership with IBM. So that's uh, VMware, VMware Private AI with IBM. So this is all about IBM Watson. IBM Watson has been around, like, you know, well, most of us, most of us have been kind of hearing about all the AI stuff related to Watson for the past decade plus, I would imagine. Uh, and Watson's typically available on, in the cloud environments only. So with this partnership between, you know, VMware by Broadcom and then IBM, now all the generative AI benefits of IBM Watson are available on-prem as well 
to, to our customers. Uh, and so both with Intel and with IBM, we've got like a jointly validated solution, reference architecture, guides, and all that kind of stuff available. The one with NVIDIA is a SKU. It's a full stack solution that you can just go and buy from us directly. Yeah, I was gonna ask like, what is what is the unit of consumption here? So it sounds like, you know, from trying to make this easier to appease, like this isn't, you know, not everybody's gonna need to, a thousand GPUs to go train a large language model. Right. Um, it sounds like there's the CPU route. There's also, you know, what what are the Justin? What are some of the smaller bites you can take? Like, let's say I don't have a fifty million dollar budget to get into this. What are what are kind of my minimum units of getting into this and, and learning, or where people are going? That's that's the perfect question, and that's the one we we want to answer first with customers, which is, with two GPUs or one GPU or four GPUs, what can I do? And many of our customers have that number. They don't have a thousand, as you rightly said. That's really for the big guys. I mean, we'd love to get into a deal like that, but we're gonna start with the small ones. And even with one, two, or four GPUs, you can do quite a lot of good work. You can do what we call retrieval augmented generation, which is essentially adding- oh, This is that rag thing all the kids right. are talking about. Everyone's talking about it, everybody's doing it. So it, the, the essence of it is, you put your private data in a database, a vector database, you have your model beside it, and the two complement each other. They work together to answer questions in a chatbot, for example, which is what everybody's starting out with. And the reason I mentioned this is because it's the hello world of AI. It's the easy application to do for it. Well, I like that the hello world application. Yeah, no, everybody writes hello world in a different language to learn, and this is where we're going. Yeah, it's, it's not quite as simple as your hello world in C that we all learned yeah. way back, but it's, it's the starting point that everybody's agreed on. NVIDIA s says this, VMware says this, data scientists out there, if you listen to them, this is the, this is the opening gambit. If you so haven't take, done this Take before. my ticket system or take my CRM or take whatever and put that in there and you can have a basic chatbot. And... and and you mentioned things that are traditionally outside the AI world, CRM systems, regular databases that run businesses. Those now are addressed through things called agents, which connect your outside world into your model and say, okay, the model's been trained on a certain amount of data. It knows how to understand English. It knows how to answer questions in English, but it doesn't know anything about VMware's internal data sure. or your company's internal data. So that private data that Imanshu mentioned, that private data goes into a separate place. It goes into a vector database in this particular design, right? So what are the common, so vector database, so you know, we've had NoSQL databases, we've had all kinds of different things in the traditional relational databases. Um, is this something I can just do with, you know, uh, a database, an open source database off the shelf? What am I looking at for that? Well, the, the answer from VMware today is Postgres with a layer on top of it. That's what we mean by vector database on the chart here. It's Postgres, a regular relational database, and the security there is encryption of the data, rollback based access control. There's a PG vector plugin or something. And then there's a, a little container sitting on the top of it, an extension to Postgres. Okay that makes it understand text in numeric form. Text in numeric form okay. is really what this query is about. It, it's, it, that's called an embedding, converting the English language sentences that we're using together, con converting the questions and the answers into numbers so that we can find similarities, similarity searches. Oh, so that's what that's about. That's what embeddings are about. And that's what that retriever in our architecture or in the NVIDIA are. And that's what these fancy CPU and GPU extensions can process more quickly. Correct, correct. So in fact, you know, I said it was adding a database to your model, making the model more intelligent because there's private data in the database. We're actually actually adding the database plus another model called an embedding model. And on the architecture behind me, you see the retriever. Mm -hmm. That's retrieving data from that vector database that's been embedded. It's it's in numeric form. Okay, so I'm gonna need a database as a service platform for this. You spin right. up DSM. D data services manager, a new tool from us, part of VMware Cloud Foundation, excellent tool for deploying Postgres or any other database. Yeah. It deploys Postgres, it, it could deploy PG Vector as an extension to Postgres. Bingo, I've got my vector database. There's nothing mysterious about this. The hard part of this is cleaning the data to go into the database <laughs> and make sure, sure make sure and finding it in the first place, yeah. that's that's where the skill comes in and the patience comes in. You know, it's not it's not different to what a data warehousing person did. Yeah. And Justin, I know we could probably spend an entire hour with you going through all the details of this, but I'm just curious, at a high level, like what does it take 
for for somebody who just recently got VMware Cloud Foundation, yeah. uh, is starting to work with uh, Private AI Foundation, maybe going with the with NVIDIA. Yeah. What does that look like from a deployment perspective? So we, we asked a customer to purchase the add-on that we call VMware Private AI Foundation with NVIDIA. Okay. It's an add-on to VCF. It has those four components in the blue layer of the architecture behind me here, which is vector databases that we talked about, uh, automation of the, the data scientist desktop. The data scientist goes to a friendly user interface and says, I need a developer environment for my new model that I'm building on. We do that through VCF automation. One button nice. and all of the infrastructure is taken care of for them. This is it, nice. My data scientists don't need to become Kubernetes admins. Exactly right. Exactly. Build anything like. No, they are developers. They like to tinker. So, so some will say, just give me Conda and give me Python running in a VM and that's enough for me. And we will supply that as a deep learning VM that you see on the chart behind. Okay. It's just a VM. It has a GPU, one or more attached to it and it's going to have the toolkit that the data scientist wanted. But that's not production, that's, that's development time, that's model, model fine tuning, developer time, Python, TensorFlow, all these tools go into that toolkit that we give them. At production time, we see that as more a Kubernetes world where you now have a cluster of things working together. You wanna to be able to scale out, use multiple CPUs or multiple GPUs. Exactly, exactly, so there is a separate button that the data scientist or the DevOps person that's working with data science presses on RE automation and says, give me an AI Kubernetes cluster and we'll provision the GPUs on the Kubernetes cluster for you and get it ready for deployment. Well, and making sure you're using, I mean, if you're going to pay that much for those GPUs, which are worth it, I'm not going to complain, but you want to make sure they're actually, you know, all getting used properly. And, and thank you, John. That's the fourth block on this diagram here, which is GPU monitoring. So, We've put a ton of effort, our engineers have put a ton of effort into making GPU consumption visible because I spent N dollars on my H100. I wish I had an H100 GPU uh, in my, or many of them, you know, customers are buying these by the dozens uh, or more. I want to know that they're actually being used. Sure. And if um, data scientist A said, I need two GPUs to do my job, how many in fact are being used there? I love data scientists. I can imagine them also being like, this is mine, this is mine, and hoarding, and having idle GPU yes. time is incredibly expensive, and it could be another, someone else on the team could be leveraging. I'm, ho I'm hoarding my GPUs like yeah. crazy. Yeah. If you ask me for a loan of my GPUs, the answer is no. That's Re the story is all this time. I mean, that's yeah. how VMware got started in terms of hyper, you know, that we had all these isolated servers, and everybody said, this SQL server needs X resources, and no, but meanwhile, it's like they're not using it, so yeah. similar concept. No, your two gigabyte database does not need 64 cores, Pete. It's what, what are you doing over there? And inside VMware for our own business, we have a portal built by data scientists that say that says, you'd love to use the Mistral model, you'd love to use Llama 3, just, mod, just came out this week. You'd love to use Phi for, or Phi from Microsoft, small model. Here's the selection of things that we've tested internally. They're hosted for you, they're running against GPUs. It's basically this architecture that we've done in, internally ourselves. And we call that virtual LLM. I love it. It's yeah. it's 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 super like it's super sophisticated yet simple to deploy uh, and easy to use. You know, it reminds me of it's kind of a similar story to VMware Cloud Foundation where we aggregated all these things and made it simple. The deployment's completely simple, so it's like a recurring theme at VMware is just taking the complex, making it accessible and and ready so people can focus on what they do best, which is their applications and their workload. That's really that's exactly that's right. Fantastic. And, and effectively, we're providing the infrastructure here. The yeah. blue layer is really infrastructure focused. We're providing a little more than that with the tooling that comes from NVIDIA in the green layer. Um, tooling like Python, PyTorch, TensorFlow, a whole bunch of libraries that NVIDIA has got. And they, that comes in there data science well, this, this is this is powerful you know this is another another infrastructure and application platform that I, you know as, as the VMware admin as the infrastructure team I don't have to spin up a whole parallel team to manage right. Um, right you know I can I need to learn a little bit about this but I don't have to learn all of this tooling and build custom images you know exactly exactly the tooling that we were talking about here is just containers exactly. each of the four things on the top of this diagram the the green layer, layer the Nvidia layer comes as a container. It's pulled down from the NVIDIA GPU cloud once, stored in a Harvard repository so that now it's private. 
Now we're not dealing with, you know, images that might be tinkered with somewhere. We're dealing. With oh, we're not just grabbing the late some random latest image from Docker Hub and hoping it's uh, uh, it's I, sanitary. I, I like to do that, but that's dangerous, as you yeah. know. So. Yeah, we want to make sure somebody's tested this container first. And some of these containers are quite big, like there's a runtime for models here, an application server for models. It's called NVIDIA Inference Microservice, NIM. They're going to use this mechanism for everything, not just models, but you know, the, the world of AI is wider than large language models. There's image recognition, there's you know, self-driving cars, there's, uh, there, there's a lot more to data science and AI than just large language models. These NIM techniques or inference microservices are going to be used across the board by NVIDIA. So you'll see a lot more of those. That's exciting. They're already stuff. there, in fact. Yeah. And one of the things is that I don't like that the concept of consistency, right? So it doesn't matter what workload you're trying to run. At the end of the day, from like from a VMA perspective, we're giving you that ubiquitous infrastructure layer through VCF. That's going to power everything. It's going to ma also make sure that the team that you had, to John's point earlier, the team that you have is able to support more and more. Because again, skills shortage is a, is a clear reality today for CIOs. And uh, you know, the more we are, they can do to make sure that your existing people, your existing you know, tools that you use can be reused to support newer, more interesting use cases, newer things that you're trying to build, uh, you know, the better it is for our customers and of course for us. Well, and, and selfishly as an operations person, you know, if, you can, if you can learn this, you're not just a VM person. Right. You're not just a container person. You know, you're also an AI. Like your team is is you can expand the mandate of your team, advance your career. Like there's there's selfishly oppor opportunities for the operations people to learn all this stuff and deliver more value. Absolutely, yeah. And Sounds like John's got some plans. Mm -hmm. I'm updating my resume. I am now an AI operations overlord. Congratulations. Welcome to AI. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Last question for you. So where can people go to learn more about this? Because I know this is going to be pretty exciting. There is a lot of information out there, and there is a fairly steep learning curve when you get to the AI terminology. Don't be phased by that. I can spell RAG. I'm good. Yeah, RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Good there, start. There is a lot of information on vmware.com slash AI-ML, AI machine learning. There is a whole series of blogs on core.vmware.com. If you look up AI on there, there's a whole segment on that. We'll be publishing even more things in the near future. We're, we're ready for a new release of this. Um, Power CLI is in the middle of it. So, oh, nice. You know, very familiar technology. If you want to automate the creation of these things through Power CLI, we'll give you some scripts to do that. Can I have chat GPT create my Power CLI scripts for me? Actually, that, that's been tried already. And uh, we, we actually re retrained the model in-house with some Power CLI code and then said, write me a script to do this. It does it. It does Power CLI. So these things are becoming very sophisticated. Now. We just got to use the AI to cheat the learning curve. This is great. Well, so. yeah. And, you know, even creation of synthetic data is being done by tools now to feed into other models. So uh, it's very exciting. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, VMware.com slash AI-ML is probably your starting point. Yeah, Justin, we need to have you back for like a like an hour-long episode so we can really pull this apart. But I want to thank you and Hamanchi for, for joining us here on Virtually Speaking. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thank you so Glad much. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you.